All right, next up is Ben Bowen, uh, who's going to talk to you about his great idea, which is um, mass spectrometry imaging. Great, right. thank you. So I'm glad you all could come here tonight. Mass spectrometry imaging is something some of you might be familiar with, but if not, I'll give you a brief primer, and then I'll tell you what's probably keeping it from getting involved in medicine today. So mass spectrometry imaging is a new chemical imaging technique that allows us to measure more information about biological samples than ever before possible. Right now, you're finding it used in cutting edge research laboratories, but if all goes according to plan, it'll eventually find its way into hospitals and in medical care. It might be used for things like diagnosis of cancer, making safer drugs, personalization of medicine, but just generally give options for healthcare treatment not currently available. So here's an example of what a mass spectrometry image looks like. Shown in these three colors, red, green, and blue, are three different molecules. Where the image is red, that's where the first molecule is more abundant. Where the image is green, the second molecule is more abundant. And where it's orange, it would be a mixture of the two molecules. So you know, when we look at different molecules simultaneously, we can learn a lot more information about the sample than just by looking at them one at a time. But if mass spectrometry imaging only allowed us to see these three molecules, they wouldn't have invited me to speak to you today, probably. That's not very interesting. So in this image, there's hundreds of other molecules present. We're just not displaying them in this simple three-color image. So mass spectrometry imaging allows us to simultaneously measure hundreds of molecules. That brings a lot of new challenges. How do you make visualizations of hundreds of molecules? These files are huge, the size of computer hard drives. So how do you store this data, share this data? How do you analyze this data with algorithms? And then lastly, the, the role of many of these molecules we detect in these images, their role is unknown. We don't know what these molecules do. So how do we store this observation and propagate that into future experiments? So how do we take mass spectrometry images? A laser is rapidly scanned across a sample. The laser is highly focused, very bright and it blasts a little bit of tissue into the gas phase. So this desorption event at every position where a tiny bit of the tissue is blown up into the gas phase can put the molecules in such a way that we can analyze them with a mass analyzer. We have to do this very carefully or the molecules will be blown to smithereens, so we have to not break any bonds. So once they're analyzed, you'll have a very sharp peak with an uncertainty of about the mass of a single electron so these peaks are known at a very precise mass, very accurate mass. So if two molecules have a similar mass, we can make two separate images for them. Here's what it looks like after the laser has shot the tissue. There's tiny little holes in it. Where each hole is, that would be another position that had been shot with the laser and a new spectrum recorded. So you've probably figured out by now we're not recording images with our laser, but we're recording chemical spectra at every position. So in these spectra, here's an example from one position from a brain. The tallest peaks are lipids that make up the cell membrane in the brain. But in this spectrum, at this single position, you might find proteins, you might find small molecules like nucleic acids, amino acids, sugars. You might find drug molecules. You might find caffeine or nicotine, these types of things in the spectrum. So this is a chemical imaging technique where at every position we're recording real molecules, lots of them. This is one spectrum at one position. So we can take a molecule like this one at this position and find it in all the other positions and that'll make an image like this. So here's an image of one lipid in the brain. Here's the same brain, different lipid. So it might be un surprise that the very similar cells, these are all neurons in the brain, have a completely different molecular profile, different molecules present. But when you think about the diverse roles that the cells have to perform in our body, it shouldn't be a surprise that they use different molecules to perform those tasks. So like I said these data files are big. One spectrum can have a, you know, a million elements in this single spectrum. And if you have 100,000 locations in an image or a million locations in an image, you, you have just an astronomical amount of data, more data points than people on Earth in a file. So you can't just look through this data point by point. You have to use advanced computer algorithms. So shown here is a multivariate statistical decomposition of a tumor into regions that are metabolically unique. 
these different regions have you know, different expression patterns of molecules, and we could run this data through an uh, advanced algorithm, and the algorithm automatically tells us that they're metabolically distinct. We don't know how to interpret this data right now, but you could imagine in the future, a doctor would take biopsies from a tumor, and it would tell the doctor that, hey, you know, there's different cell types here. I don't want to treat this with one drug, but a combination of drugs tuned to the personal, personalized observation. So we had this finding completely validated by blind histology. This process wasn't easy, so we want to make this faster. This was a big data problem. This took a tremendous amount of effort to do this for one tumor. Days of computation. So we can also do this in three dimensions. Here's a three-dimensional image of a tumor. So now we just exploded the big data to even bigger. So this file, if you thought of it as a stack of books, it would be one and a half miles tall for this one file. That's kind of an analogy to how much data you're really dealing with here. So we need algorithms. So these bottlenecks are keeping emerging technologies like mass spectrometry imaging, but there's many other technologies that are like this. These bottlenecks are keeping these tools from prime time. You can't generate data that's not analyzable. That, uh, your doctor, I mean, billing $300 an hour, they're going to, you know, that's going to take them a while to analyze this data. It takes a month to do one tumor. <laughs> so we need to make this faster. We need to make new methods for transparency of how the data is collected so that we know. But we also need standard methods, standardization of these protocols so that it can work at scale. So in my last slide, I'm going to tell you about the solution that we've developed here at Berkeley Lab, what we think is a solution to this problem. It's the OpenMSI project. OpenMSI aims to bring the most advanced computing, like what you heard in the previous talk, right through the web browser so that when someone generates one of these files, they upload the data to NERSC, the supercomputing facility in Oakland, one of the largest supercomputers in the world. The data gets analyzed at NERSC, stored at NERSC, so now you don't have to have you know, these giant external hard drives filling your backpack everywhere you go. It's all sitting, sitting there in a supercomputing data center. The algorithms run on these, these super fast, big computers to produce nice results that we can all look at in the browser. This allows the data to be shared, analyzed by teams, interpreted by experts, but then it's also stored for future scientists so that when you come in to look at the data, you can do that on the shoulders of people that have analyzed this type of data before you. That's all I got. I'm right on time.